David and Compton Hill. And all the rest of y'all, it's time for Bible study, Bible study, Bible study. And before we go, amen, deeper into the Word of God, we need to go to the throne of God so we can get the comprehension from the Spirit of God. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Blessed eternal land, the everlasting Father, Father of our blessed Lord and wonderful Savior, Jesus the Christ, Lord God, you taught us to say and to pray, our Father. Lord God, we bow down heads and humble and grateful and cheerful and anticipatory and excited hearts so we come before thee just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, thank for watching you. over us while we slept last night yeah. and keeping us all safe from any types of hurt, harm, or danger, seen or unseen. We thank you, Father God, for not thank allowing you. a demonic burglar to break in or demonizing blaze to break out. We thank you, Father God, for all that you present and all that you present. We thank you for waking us, clothing us, put us in our right minds, and finding ourselves in reasonable facsimiles of health. We thank you for touching our lowly bodies of flesh with our loving finger of divinity, having us to do what you've ordained for us and giving us to come and learn of thee. We ask now, Lord God, as we open the word of God of the day, we not only see the words on the pages, we see your face, your charisma, your character that will alter our Christian conduct. Let your word go forth and rest upon the altars of our hearts that we will inevitably be rendered unto thee in more benevolent and diligent service. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O my Lord, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. As your word goes forth, Lord God, let it not only inform us and conform us, but please allow it to transform us. Purge us with his and cleanse us, that we might become whiter than snow. Help us, Father God, as one unified, loving body of Christ. Not be, over, not be overly impressed by me, but to be abundantly blessed by thee, that together in unity we will all hear your voice more clearly, follow more nearly, and love you more dearly. Father God, these and all the other blessings we do ask in the matchless, wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, and amen. Amen. It's wonderful to be here uh, with you. Amen. We're uh, uh, examining, and we're really we're just, we're just going through a wonderful exhibition of the life of Joseph, uh, and how Joseph's life mirrors that of, of Jesus Christ. How Joseph is one that had great trials, but also great triumph. Uh, last week we talked about Joseph, how his dreams, how he was immature, uh, how his brothers were angry with him, and the the dysfunction of families, but now we will see how uh, Joseph's perseverance, you know, uh, trials and tribulations, they, they don't come to destroy us. Uh, they don't come to just to disappoint us. Uh, they come uh, to uh, not discourage us, but to develop us. Amen. Now, the problem with that is that sometimes we want to be developed overnight. Amen. We have a, a, a microwave attitude, amen, but, but, but a crock pot mentality. We have to continue to uh, understand that God is not interested in time, only in timing. Even Joseph in his, in his life uh, got his timing messed up and we'll show you how God made sure that Joseph's timing was precise because God's timing is precise. So we're in, the, we're in Genesis chapter 41 now. Amen. Uh, and verses uh, 20, 25 through 33, 37 through 40, 50 through 52. Amen. <clears throat> will help us. And uh, my topic to, uh, tonight is God rewards obedience. God rewards obedience. And obedience is very difficult uh, to do, uh, but very easy to say. We have tendency, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Obedience is always, uh, external obedience shows <clears throat> internal authenticity. So we're, we're in, you know, at times, beloved, it may be difficult uh, to hold on to our dreams. Amen. The dreams of our future and our future success uh, when we're faced with extreme hardships. Uh, one of the essences that we must always understand, always remember this, any time that uh, you're about to accomplish something. Anytime that you have a goal, uh, the first element that you're going to meet is opposition. You're going to always meet opposition. So the essence of how do we handle the opposition will determine how we handle our opportunities. Because every opportunity comes with opposition. As a matter of fact, in our position, we should see all, all obstacles as opportunities. Because it's God's opportunity to show who He is. And showing who He is, He's showing through who we are. So essence is, beloved, it's difficult at times uh, uh, to, uh, to remain focused on what our dreams are. But, but if, we, if we will persevere, amen, God says we will be rewarded. Uh, we're like, honestly, we're like tea bags. Uh, you don't know what's, <clears throat> a tea bag doesn't, doesn't show what's inside until it's in hot water. A lot of us, we, want, we don't know what's inside of us until we're placed in hot water. And if we're placed in the hot water, if what's in us will come out of us, 
uh, just like a tea bag. Uh, but because Joseph loved and obeyed God, oh, help me somebody, uh, he was able to engage in wise and discerning problem solving that motivated Pharaoh, amen, to appoint him second in command over all of Egypt, amen. So what he did was his endurance, amen, beloved, and perseverance uh, was, re was rewarded uh, by God because God is always, amen, always with us, always sees us, amen, always wants the best for us. But at times we have tendency, amen, to uh, try to make God hurry up. We try to give, make God uh, uh, adjust himself to our timing rather than us being uh, patient uh, and embracing God's timing. So I'm in Genesis chapter 41, verses 25 through 33, and 37 through 40, and 50 through 52. Let us, amen, open our Bibles. Let us read God's word. I'm starting in verse 25. And the Bible declares, And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years. The seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with each, with each wind shall be seven years of famine. Now, kind of, or cows. Kind of cows. Amen. So you get a, a, a clear understanding. This is the thing which I've spoken. I'm in verse 25. Unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showed unto Pharaoh. Behold, there came seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall continue, shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Amen. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to all, and according unto the, thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asana, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the first of his firstborn Manasseh, for God said he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. May the Lord have blessing to the readers and the hearers and the heeders of his holy word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I know some of what I'm reading here may be a little blurry to you, but we're going to make sure we uh, clear that up because there are some scriptures that, that are vital uh, uh, to this, if you get a closer, a closer and a clearer a comprehension of what's happening here. But we see that Joseph, amen, <clears throat> verses uh, 37 through 40, uh, Joseph's life and conditions had fallen into a hopelessness. Amen. Uh, he'd been in a pit at Potiphar's place, uh, presumed dead by his father. Amen. Prison, forgotten by a prisoner. Amen. But the, but the Bible continually reminded us that God was with him. Amen. Positionally. Even though it didn't seem he was with him conditionally. Always with him positionally. Amen. So with that, the dreams got descended. Uh, uh, and then also, Amen. The dreams that got him descended were dreams that also got him ascended. So let us go, let us, let me break this down of uh, what we can get a clear understanding. So the first essence of what I want to say about that is this. Uh, before we get into uh, the lesson, I want us to turn, when we're hearing Bible study, I want us to turn to, amen, Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Amen. And you know, I want to hear the turn of the pages, so, amen. Psalm 26. Verses of one and two. Now, I'm, I'm, and I need you to hear me. Um, <clears throat> Psalm 26, uh, two and three. And it says, uh, well, I started one. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. So I have trusted, 
also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Now, what, what, what the psalmist is saying here is that he's going to trust God, uh, uh, even though he's been, he's been faithful to God, obedient to God, but things are going to happen. Amen. Look at verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Try me, Lord. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. I know that you're loving and you're kind. I can see it. And I have walked in thy truth. Now what he's saying, what the Psalms are saying here, something I want us to, to remember as we get into this lesson. Beloved, uh, everybody can serve God when things are going great. Everybody loves God in the sunshine. But hear me, anytime you're in, the, in a place where it's sunny and bright every day, all day, beloved, you're in a desert. Can you serve and obey God when things aren't going well? Can you serve and obey God during that illness, or during that pink slip, or during that pain, during that divorce, or during that death? Can you still love and serve God then? And this is the point I want to make. Hear me. Never forget this. Faith is not faith until faith is all you've got. I'm going to say that again. Faith is not faith until it's all you got. Now let's get into the lesson. I want to... The first uh, essence of, of our lesson I want us to see is dreams and the purposes of God. Dreams and the purposes of God. Uh, I'm, in verse, I'm in verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream, remember he was a dreamer? Amen. All was about his dreams. So it says the dream of Pharaoh is one. One dream. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me stop here. I want you to, 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 I need you to grab this now because it's important. Joseph was a dreamer. Remember in last week's lesson, his dreams got him in trouble. Remember? His brothers got mad at him. His dad had to scold him. But dreams are the very thing, his, uh, his interpreting his dreams to his folks, a lack of timing, too early, but also interpreting dreams got him not only descended, amen, for what his brothers did to him, dreams, amen, also got him ascended to where he ends up being second in command. What I'm saying is because when God, when God blesses you with a gift, the gift will always, always, always make you better than what you were. Amen. God gives no blessings or uh, 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 no gifts with a regret. Amen. But if we just if we abuse the gift, it causes regrets. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Proper use of the gift, amen, causes elevation. Amen. Lack of proper use of the gift causes aggravation. Sometimes humiliation. So let's get back to the, to the word of God here. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream, because Joseph is indeed uh, interpreting uh, 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 Pharaoh's dream, said, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God had showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God is showing Pharaoh what he's about to do through a dream. Because remember now, God was indeed, uh, as Hebrews tells us, that in earlier times, and sundry times, that he talked, spoke to us through dreams. Amen. So he says, the seven, underline seven, seven means number of completion. Number of completion. The seven good kind are seven years. And the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears, blessed with the east wind, shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Now hear me. What bothers Potiphar is, I mean, uh, uh, Pharaoh is this. The thin kind, the sickly and, 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 and weak looking, consumed and ate up the strong and powerful ones. This is what caused uh, such a disturbance for, for Pharaoh because you would think that the strong and powerful kind, amen, would be dominant over the thin. But no, the thin were dominant over the more powerful. So this is why this is such a disturbing dream of, for Pharaoh. Then he says this, And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it shall be very grievous. The famine shall be dominant and grievous. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Now, I need you to get this. I need you to hear me here. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Two is the number of witness. Remember that. 
One is the number of unity. Two is the number of witness. And whenever something is done twice, amen, God said that the word will be established. It, it brings, a, it, it brings a, a continuity, and it also brings authenticity and truth. So two is the number of witness. Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. You have uh, uh, two testaments. Amen. Word is established, a level of truth. Remember that. Always remember that. And so <clears throat> I want us to understand that, beloved, that throughout this time, uh, the Bible clearly continued to remind us that God was with Joseph. And dreams that got him descended, thrown into a pit. Amen. Was also dreams that got him ascended. That brought him into the, to, into the company and audience of Pharaoh. Even Pharaoh wasn't immune to the power of God. You see, so in that, so he had a problem with the dream and then wanted to know what the dream was going to do. Now hear me. He went to all the magicians and the wise and uh, uh, the wise uh, uh, wizards and things, and all of them, amen, failed at being able to interpret the dream. Amen. Because, beloved, without God's wisdom, all you have is splendid ignorance. Splendid ignorance. So in that, all this soothsaying and fortune telling and calling, beloved, hear me. It comes to naught. It's a nothing. It's absolute. It's an absolute nothing. So he says, now get this. So Joseph was given the opportunity, amen, in just the right time, amen, to explain to, to, to uh, the, the dream to Pharaoh. As a matter of fact, let us turn, amen, to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40, because I want us to have strong clarity here, because there's, there's vital messages that God wants us to... <clears throat> to grasp on about living uh, the lives that we're living in. Now, hear me. Uh, Genesis chapter 40, amen. I'm starting at verse 14, amen. Genesis chapter 40, and we're in 41, but something happens in 40 that brings leads us to 41, right? We want to understand what's brought us to this point. So in Genesis chapter 40, I'm starting at verse 14, uh, uh, Joseph was in prison, amen. And while Joseph was in prison, uh, Joseph was given uh, an opportunity uh, uh, to, uh, to, ex to, to exhibit his ability uh, to interpret dreams. He got in prison and met two inmates. It's mean, amazing how God sets things up. He got, went to prison and met two inmates that ended up being a help to him, but only in God's timing. Only in God's timing. Now, I'm going to show you something that's interesting here, now, and I, I, want you to, I want you to catch this. I'm starting in verse 14. But think on me when it shall be. Now, Joseph has told, I'll start, let me make it easier, easier for you. I'm going to start uh, uh, in verse 8. 40, verse 8. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream. This, these were the, 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 the inmates in there. And there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? You try to do what God does. Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup unto Pharaoh's, into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches of three days, because Joseph had the gift of interpreting dreams from God, right? He, he, he established that earlier. Then he says that, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hands after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think of me when it would, now, now this is why I want you to circle this in your, in, in, in your Bible. Then Joseph says to, to, to the butler, but think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. Stop there. What am I saying? I believe here that this delayed Joseph's freedom. Because Joseph had not yet, Joseph was trying to justify his feeling victimized by being in prison. Oh, you oh, I don't think you I don't think you're hearing me. I'm gonna say it again. Joseph, amen, had told them to Tell the folks about me because I'm in here unjustly. Joseph was starting to complain. Joseph was trying to justify his, the, the fact that he was unjustly in prison. And for that, God said, I, 
You're not quite ready yet. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, mm. Joseph, I'm using and sending and getting you prepared, but you're not quite ready because you're looking for you're looking for self fleshly comfort. And God can't use a man that's putting himself in front of God. Mm. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. So don't miss that. Joseph says to them, he says, but think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness. I pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Oh, you, you better hear me. Mm -hmm. Amen. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. And with that, God said, ah, you're not quite right. Amen. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a miss a, a couple of in here that, that know how to cook, so they know you know you don't wanna you don't wanna amen uh, take a, a 50 minute stew out amen when it's almost been 40 cooking for 45 minutes amen. So then he then he says this. I don't miss this. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation, amen. I'm still in 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 in, in, in chapter 40, amen. And I'm now in, I'm now in verse 16. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the up uppermost basket there was all of manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon thy head, upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass, the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. So what Joseph said was accurate, because God had gave him the gift. Amen. God didn't take the gift from him. Amen. And he restored the chief butler unto his butler ship again, and he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged, amen, the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them, right? But get this, yet. First of all, yet is like but. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Amen. And I believe, amen, that he was forgotten because he was not quite ready. Mm -hmm. He was trying to justify himself. God says, I miss my timing is everything. God says, not in your time, Joseph. Amen. God must be first. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. God was with him. He didn't leave him, but he just wasn't ripe yet. Amen. He wasn't right yet. Amen. And so dreams and the purpose of God, because the dreams that Joseph was able to interpret had a purpose. Amen. And God's purposes will not be will not come will not be done prematurely. Oh man. Or it never comes early. It never comes late. It's kind of like the sunrise. Now hear me. Uh, all of us go to bed at night, and we're especially. I remember when I was a kid uh, on Christmas Eve. Boys go to bed and. 10 o'clock, man, and hoping that, you know, go see him, hoping that Christmas will come early, come quicker. You can, you can get a cheerleading, amen, you can get a band, you can get up, but the sun's going to come up at the time God's ordained. You're never going to get the sunrise to come not one minute early or one minute late. God's timing, beloved, is, is, is impeccable, amen, impenetrable, and non-negotiable. Oh, you better hear me. And so what Joseph learned here is that God's timing is perfect. And so in this, I want us to understand that the dreams, amen, had a purpose. And I want you to see the dreams and the purposes of God. It had a specific purpose. Amen. Specific purpose. A specific purpose. So it says, and it's for be, and for that the dream was double unto Pharaoh twice. Remember, because twice, two times is the number of witnesses. So the word be established that it's true. Now get this. Pharaoh, it is because the thing is established by God. It's not changing. Amen. Established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. So I need you to get that. So the first element of, of what happens here is that uh, the dreams and the purposes of God. Amen. Even though Joseph uh, did what God had ordained him to do, uh, did what God had gifted him to do, uh, but he had to wait for a while, but as a matter of fact, for a couple of years. Amen. A couple of years before Joseph was remembered because he was not quite right. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. So secondly, firstly, dreams and the promises, purposes of God. Now we're dealing with, amen, I want you to see a promotion ordered by God. Oh, you 
anybody here when 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 uh, when the timing is right amen uh, when when the God has a microwave to go beep when it goes beep it's God's it's time amen take it out amen I'm in I'm in verse 33 now amen uh, Genesis chapter 41 verse 33 and it says now you see that underline that now one of my favorite words in all of scripture because now means it counsels what's behind it. You need to do something that's from, from henceforth. It's a, a beginning of something that else to occur. It says, now, therefore. Therefore come, means leading to a conclusion, right? Those of my Bible students, we know that therefore and wherefore always leads to a conclusion. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. Underline those two. Discreet and wise. Amen. Discreet, don't run his mouth all the time. And wise has the wisdom of God, and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, for this reason, for what because of what Joseph has told him about the dream, interpret the dream. He says, now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Now he is ordering. He's telling Joseph. I mean, he's telling Pharaoh what to do. Not 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 in in authority, but based on uh, 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 knowledge and wisdom. He's advising or counseling Pharaoh. Amen. He's counseling Pharaoh. Now, I need you to get this. Uh, the qualities of a man indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, they are literally impossible to ignore. The, 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 the qualities of a man that's indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, beloved, those qualities are impossible to ignore. Oh, you better hear me. Some folks may delay acknowledging them. Uh, don't be discouraged because what God placed in you, if it's going to come out of you, oh, you better hear me. And it's impossible to be ignored. So Joseph counsels and advises Pharaoh. He says, now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet. He didn't say look at me. Uh, need you to circle that. He says look out. What he's saying is do your due diligence and search for a man. I'm not saying I'm the man. I'm not saying, now let me, Joseph didn't, see, because now Joseph is, is primed, amen, the timing is right, uh, he's right for God's, amen, use, uh, uh, he's waited uh, uh, to, 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 he knows that God is first, oh, help me somebody, uh, you have to wait on God, David was anointed 15 years before he stepped into his anointing, oh, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me, 15 years! Before he, before he stepped into his anointing and his assignment. Amen. When God calls, he equips. But God's timing is everything. Amen. So he says, look out uh, a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. It does not say, look at me. Amen. I'm discreet. I'm wise. Set me over the land of Egypt. Oh, you, y'all ain't me. I don't think y'all getting that. Amen. He says, look out. Amen. A man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. The promotion was ordered by God. Amen. Joseph is just a tool. Joseph is just a tool now that's counseling the man that has the authority uh, to do it. Oh, you, I need you to get that. Amen. So we see now that dreams and the purposes of God. Because you see, really, let, let me say this. Genesis, amen, that we're reading here, is the story of, of, of Joseph, but it's really all about God. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, it's telling about Joseph, but it's really all about God. Now, <clears throat> so we look at verse 33, uh, uh, and it says, Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, uh, get this. Uh, that, that's the second. Now, the third segment I want us to uh, uh, to explore here. Uh, I'm in verse 37. I'm going to skip to verse 37. Uh, it says, I want you to know that what humans mean for ill, God means for good. What humans mean for ill, God means for good. Now I'm in verse 37. Listen to this. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Let me stop there. Now, the thing, when you see, the, what, what thing, Pastor? This is why, amen, we're in Bible study. Amen. Uh, beloved was down in the well. Uh, 
comes up in the bucket. Amen. Joseph speaks with the wisdom of God as bestowed upon him. Now, how, how do I know this? Let's go to, amen, verse 34. Amen. If we, we skipped, amen, we jump over from 32, I mean from 33 to 37. No, 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 we don't do that. Amen. Not in Bible study. Amen. So now let's look at when, when chapter 41. So let's go to, amen, verse amen, 30, 34. The Bible says this. He says, <clears throat> let Pharaoh do this. I mean, verse 34 now, we stop at 33. Where it says, now therefore let Pharaoh, amen, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this. Amen. You hear me in verse, I'm in verse 34. And let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. He's counseling him now. And let them gather all of the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. He's showing a great deal of wisdom here. He's counseling and giving the wisdom that God has placed in him. Oh, look at God. And that food shall be for stored to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt. And the land perish not through the famine. Now, let me tell you what this, what, why this, this excites me so. I love this. What God placed in him, but I say what, what, what's down the well comes from the, up in the bucket. The wisdom that God gave Joseph. Joseph humbly advised Pharaoh on what to do. And he told him here what to do here. And everything that he said was wise, poignant, and perfect. Because God had given it to him. Now hear me, uh, believers. When God has placed a gift in you, whatever that gift is, obey God and how you use it. Whenever God places a gift in you, and every believer is gifted. Every believer. There is no such thing as a giftless Christian. Impossible. So if God's given you one or 100 gifts, use the gift the way God intended you to use it. Use the gift by letting God use you. Don't abuse the gift by trying to manipulate me with the gift. Oh, you better hear me. Don't, don't miss that. What Joseph did was Joseph advised with authority that God had given him of the knowledge and the wisdom and the prudence of how to apply the knowledge and wisdom that God had given him. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. So then with that, and that um, um, verse 36, and that and, and that food shall be for stored to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not throughout, I mean, not through the famine. And the thing was good under the eyes of Pharaoh. The, well, now you know what thing. The thing is what, what verses 34 through 36 says, that what, what Joseph told Pharaoh to do, that thing, amen, was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. In the eyes of all of his servants, everybody heard it. Oh, you better hear me. Everybody heard it. Oh, I love that. Uh, you can't be afraid, amen, to extend and establish uh, your gift. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Say what thus says the Lord. Don't worry about the consequences. When you're obeying God, come closer. When you are obeying God, obey God and leave all the consequences to God. When you are obeying God, you can leave all the consequences to God. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? Now stop here. Of this is. Who is he talking about that this is? Joseph. We can look out, but is anybody better than this man? We, he's already in front of us, as this is. A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, circle that. Where the Spirit of God is. Amen. They are recognizing that what Joseph is saying is something that, that only a man full of God can do. Only what a man full of God would say. And in that, Pharaoh is asking the servants, is there anybody else that has shown, amen, exemplified the Spirit of God? And beloved, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, if we're called of God in any crowd we're in, we, no, we're not out there to make noise, to make money, but we're to make a difference. 
A believer, a twice born believer in a once born world should make a difference. Not try to, you know, have be impressive or amen, be influential. That's fine, but have an impact. Amen. Amen. Make a difference. And he says here, can we find such a one, not many, such a one as this is? Amen. Joseph is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Yes, Lord. For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are, as thou art. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Oh, I, I, oh, I can shout here. He said, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Nobody is showing the wisdom and the knowledge that you're showing. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Because Joseph was right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Sometimes, beloved, the juice ain't, is not worth the squeeze. But when, it's, but when the fruit is ripe, amen. It's like water to a thirsty man. You, when you're thirsty enough, you're drinking that water, you close your eyes, it's so good to you. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. So then, then with that, he says, Thou shalt be over my house. Never forget this. God will use, when, when, when you are called of God, God will not put you over until you're willing to be under. Mm -hmm. Never forget that. God will never put you over until you're willing to be under. When Joseph was saying, get, try to, jo, jo, he tried to be over for a minute. Remember, he was trying to tell the cupbearer to tell about me and get me out and get me. But when he realized, yes, Lord. He told, he advised Pharaoh to look out and find somebody. Not look at me and make me that body. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. And, and Joseph turned to him. I mean, and, 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 and Pharaoh turned to him and said, Thou shalt be over, over my house. And according, oh, help me somebody. According unto thy word shall all thy people be ruled. According to thy word. Have you heard it before? Amen. Mary said, according to thy word. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Because the word that Joseph said was coming from God. And if you are living your life according to thy word, oh, beloved, I'm not saying that at times you won't get uncomfortable, but you will be unconquered. Amen. The sign of being, if you're doing anything according to God's word, you're undefeated. You better hear me. Amen. He says, according to thy word shall all, not most of, my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be, will I be greater than thou. Oh, you better hear me. What humans meant for ill, God means for good. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Yes, Lord. I'm going to let that marinate a second. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to read it slow. For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none, nobody so discreet and wise as thou art, as you are. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people, all my people be ruled. You better hear me. Amen. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Oh, help me, help me to celebrate that, Lord. Help me somebody. Amen. Amen. That Joseph now, amen, is given authority. Now, hear me. Amen. Hear me. Now, let me go to, amen, something very important here. Um, 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 let me go to, amen, my, my fourth and, and, and final thought. Joseph is now standing on the promises of God. Yes, Lord. Standing on God's promises. Yes, Lord. I'm in verse uh, 52. Amen. We're going from 40 to 52, right? Well, no, can't do that. Amen. You know I can't do that. Amen. A transformation, amen, of exaltation occurs here. Amen. A transformation and exaltation has occurred here. And let's see that transformation. Amen. Get in your Bibles. Amen. And turn, amen. When we're, we're in chapter 41, let's go to verse... 41. Verse 41. 
Remember now, they, they, they stopped and remember they stopped. Thy word shall all people be ruled only the throne. He said that. Now get this. From verse 41 to 49. Listen closely. While you're there, I didn't hear the pages turn. Are you there? Okay. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. So he must have turned and had Joseph look out upon the land. Oh, help me. Oh, help me see this thing, Lord God, the way you want us to. He must have said, See, amen, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He's showing Joseph the world. Oh, help me, somebody. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. Mm. Oh, help me. The ring of authority. Showing the ring that I, that I wear of authority, Joseph, now you wear it. Oh, you better hear me. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Stop there. Mm. Remember, as a kid, Joseph had a coat of many colors. Oh, you ain't hearing me. And they stripped him of that. Oh, yes, Lord. But now he's been arrayed again. Oh, help me, somebody. This time in God's timing. Amen. Not because of a father that was causing dysfunction in the family. God's timing. Amen. Jesus Christ, amen, was humbled. I mean, obedient, obedient even unto death, even unto the death of the cross, for the Lord God had highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name, that the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What am I saying? In God's timing, Jesus Christ was exalted. In God's timing, Joseph is exalted. He's been exalted right here. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Help me, somebody. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, where everybody could see. And they cried, this one before him, bow the knee. Oh, help me. Oh. And he made him rule over all the land of Egypt. Oh, ex exaltation, yes, Lord, and transformation. Amen. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Amen. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. What he's saying is, nobody can approach me unless they approach you first, Joseph. Nobody can approach me unless they approach you. Nobody can approach God the Father unless they go through God the Son. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, they, Joseph is a Christ-like figure here. It's symbolic of how God has used Joseph in exemplifying who Jesus Christ will be. You cannot no one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus says. You cannot, Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity. Oh, you better hear me. You cannot go to the Father except through, through the Son. Oh, beloved. And then the Son was neglected earlier. Amen. But now he won't be now. Oh, you better hear me. You better hear me. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnat Paniah. Say it again. Zaphnat Paniah. Zaphnat Paniah. And he gave him to wife, a Sanath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Now hear me. He called his name Zapapanania. Now get this. Uh, uh, which is, 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 is uh, uh, a priest. I mean, he gave him the wife, uh, the daughter of a priest, amen, of On. But, but, but Joseph didn't bow down to them. Amen. Uh, what, what, what Pharaoh thinks he's doing is is, is obeying his God. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, but Joseph is still a Joseph to Joseph. They can call you what they want to call you. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, you determine who you are. Oh, help me. Uh, they can call you what they want to call you. It's what God calls you is what matters. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, I'm going to say it one last time. Three times a charm. They can call you what they want to call you. But it's what God calls you is that counts. It's what matters. You answer to what God calls Amen. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 30. How old was Jesus Christ when he began his ministry? Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Amen. Symbolic. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Oh, help me somebody. Jesus Christ went through all the land. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verifying. Amen. Justifying. Amen. His call from God. He said, I always do what pleases the Father. And he didn't do it until it was time. John the Baptist 
was doing all the talking until Jesus turned 30 years old. Then Jesus said, I must suffer, amen, baptism, so, so the scripture will be fulfilled. At 30 years of age, Jesus began, began his ministry that God had ordained, his assignment that God had given him. Amen. And at 30, oh, help me somebody, Joseph was given, was starting to do the assignment that, 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 uh, 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 that Pharaoh had given him. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. And in the seven penteous uh, years of the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt. I'm in verse 48. And laid up the food in, uh, in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city. Laid up in the, in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Help me somebody. Amen. Oh, beloved. Oh, I'm, I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm so excited about that. I, uh, I'm about to jump out of my seat. Uh, Pharaoh gave Joseph an Egyptian name, amen, of authority, but Joseph knew he belonged to God. Now, I need to walk you through something here that I, I don't want you to miss. Don't you miss this. Amen. Uh, get your Bibles and get turn these pages. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Oh, I'm going to hear the pages. Genesis 37. And verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. That's, that's the favor of his father, right? Joseph had the favor of his father, right? I need you to get that. Now Israel loved Joseph. He's the favor of his father. Now, Go to verse chapter 39. Chapter 39. Amen. Verse 4. And jo 39 verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had he put into his hand. God's favor. Oh, y'all hearing me. Uh, uh, Joseph was, was, was favor of his father. Joseph was favored with Potiphar. Amen. Joseph found grace in his sight. Potiphar's sight. And he served. Amen. And he made him overseer over his house. God's favor. Amen. And all that he had put into his hand. When God's favor over your life, I don't care what conditions you're in. Your position is you have God's favor. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Now, we're still in, 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 in chapter 39. Now, look at uh, verse 21. Of chapter 39. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. And showed him mercy and gave him what? Favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Amen. And it says in verse 22, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And, who, and whatsoever they did there, he was, he was a doer of it. Amen. And the keeper of the prison, verse 30, 23, Look not unto anything that was under Joseph's hand, under his hand, because the Lord was with him. Oh, help me somebody. The Lord was with him. Amen. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Oh, can I, can I read that one more time? Let me read that one more time. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand. Amen. All the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Yes, Lord. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Trust it. Trust it, Joseph. Joseph had integrity. Amen. Because the Lord was with him. Because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. 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 Now, let's go to, amen, uh, verse four, chapter 41. Chapter 41. Amen. Chapter 41. And let's look at, amen, uh, verse 38. Remember, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? God's favor. God's favor. Now, let me close with this. Amen. Uh, look at verses 55. Starting 55. Amen. Chapter 41, verse 55. Now, when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. Oh, help me somebody. Go unto Joseph, 
what he said to you do. Let me, let me stop there. Jesus Christ was at a wedding. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And they ran out of wine. Mm -hmm. They ran out of wine. Uh, Mary turned to the servants. Oh, you better hear me. He said, whatever he tells you to do, you do. Pharaoh says, mm. and when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. People come to Pharaoh, all the people. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, all of not most, go unto Joseph. <laughs> what he said to you, do. Oh, help me somebody. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into, into Egypt to Joseph. Oh, help me. Oh, please feel this, my brother. Lord Jesus, let them feel it like I'm saying it. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the, in all the, the lands. Egypt came to Joseph. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Beloved, hear me, hear me, hear me. God will exalt you. Amen. God will exalt your time. Just Obey God, leave all the consequences to him. Oh, beloved, uh, reminded when Nelson Mandela exemplified being the epitome of one who overcame bitterness. Amen. You better hear me. When, they, when, when he was being released from prison after being in prison all of those years, Nelson Mandela said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead me to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. Oh, help me somebody. As he was leaving the prison, he said, I need to leave the bitterness and the resentment in the prison or I'll be taking the prison with me. Oh, you better get this. Amen. There are other quotes, beloved, hear me. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it'll kill your enemy. Amen. You can't drink the poison and wait for somebody else to die. That's what bitterness will do to you, beloved. Hear me, let, let it go. Get your pride out of the way, let it go. Amen. Prosecution, amen. I'm not intended interested in prosecution. I'm interested in building a nation, Nelson Mandela said. Amen. The thought process signified true freedom. For, beloved, uh, when you are, let bitterness go. When you forgive someone, the person that's freed is not the one you're forgiving. It's you for doing the forgiving. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. I need you to recognize God's uh, revelation here. Leading up to this text, Pharaoh was troubled by two dreams, remember? In the first dream, he saw seven cows devouring seven fat cows. Remember, seven thin cows? Amen. In, the, in a dream, too, there were seven thin heads of grain devouring seven healthy ones. Amen. His uneasiness about the dreams caused him to enlist the advice of his magicians and wise men. They couldn't do nothing. They were unable to interpret the dreams. But Pharaoh was not deterred from seeking and being receptive to other advice. Wise leader. See God at work? Well, you better hear me. The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 13. Uh, I need you to hear me during this pandemic. Amen. Policemen, presidents, uh, teachers, governments, uh, they're all authorities given to them of God. Now, all of them may not be godly, but all of those authorities given of God. And God, God places and, and, and replaces uh, those in authority. They're in the hands of God. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. That's why during this pandemic, during this administration, I sleep like a baby. You better hear me. Amen. God used this opportunity to have Joseph come forth as a leader he was destined to be. See, God's, amen, revelation. Secondly, look at God's reverie. Amen. Joseph was brought from prison to the palace to interpret the king's mysterious dream. He, unlike the king's wise man, was able to accurately decipher the dream. You better hear me. A lot of folks, amen, are, are false amen, uh, interpreters, but no, no. God will authenticate those he's called. Joseph acknowledged that he could not decode the dream. Yes, Lord. But that God would do it. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Amen. That God would give Pharaoh the answer he needed. And Joseph foretold that, beloved, uh, there would be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of severe famine. And he further explained that because the dream came in two versions, it signified that it was of God and that the time was imminent. Amen. Hear me. 
It's amazing how uh, the bad times overrule the good ones. The thin kind, the thin cows ate up the fat ones. Uh, 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 they need to tell you something. See, too often, beloved, uh, too often, uh, we try to uh, live high and hearty and just embrace all the good times. No, remember the bad ones too. Remember the bad ones too. Amen. I'm saying that to say this. Uh, beloved, uh, it's important to understand what God uh, 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 tells us to do. You better hear me. Now, <clears throat> uh, uh, look at verses 50 and 52. Now, hear me. 50 and 52. Please hear me. Amen. Standing on the promises of God. Uh, and unto Joseph were born two sons before the, before the years of famine came. Which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said he had made me forget all my toil in my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of affliction. Now hear me. Please hear me. Amen. Beloved, notice carefully the direction of a life of a man of God must go. What I'm saying, what am I saying here? When you look at what Joseph names his son, when God calls you, God tells you to go in one direction, forward. Go forward. Don't look back. Amen. Don't dwell on what's behind you. Go forward. That's what forgiveness is. That's what forgiveness is. Look at what Joseph says here. He says, and unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came. When, when Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. He's forgotten all that, that's been done to him. Oh, help me somebody. He's forgiven all that's been done to him. And to put it into something tangible. So I'll name my son Manessa. Amen. For God has taught me, has made taught me to forgive and let go. Oh, you better hear me. To forgive and let go. Forget all of my toil, not most of it, and all of my father's house. Oh, help me somebody. And then the name of the second call, he Ephraim. The second two. Oh, you better hear me. To be established, two. Oh, y'all ain't hard. If you, listen, if you just listen to the Bible, beloved, amen. He called him Ephraim, for God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. The place that I was afflicted, amen. Now I'm second in command. Oh, you ain't hearing me. The place where I was afflicted, placed in prison, forgotten about, I thought. I was forgotten about by man, but not by God. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. For God has caused me, underline that, caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Amen. The response to God's revelation, at the advice of Joseph, Pharaoh saw the need to choose wise, choose a wise man to oversee storing, amen, 20% of the grain during the years of the plenty in preparation for the coming years of famine. God directed Pharaoh to appoint Joseph to the exalted throne. Yes, Lord. Joseph was completely exonerated and abundantly compensated. Yes, Lord. He was royally rewarded and made to forget his bitterness and the mistreatment done to him. God will do that, beloved, if you just forgive as God forgives. God says, I forgive your sins and throw it to the lake, the sea of, un of, of, of forgetfulness. Amen. Hear me. God's response to Joseph's faithfulness resulted in a doubling of blessings for him. Oh, you better hear me. Joseph er Joseph's early life reflects a time of betrayal and abuse. We saw that last week. For many people, it would be a time accompanied by bitterness, hatred, a need for revenge. But Joseph had an adverse response. He relied totally on the timing of God. Let me somebody to bring him out. God's timing is not our timing. I'm going to say that again. God's timing is not our timing. He is never too early or he's never too late. You better hear me. Amen. Our responsibility is to walk in faith and in love. Love triumphs bitterness each time, every time. Amen. Joseph's resume was not impressive initially. During the dash of his life, oh, help me somebody. 
Amen. You look at tombstones in any graveyard. There's a t time of birth, then there's a dash. Oh, help me. I don't care if you live one year or 100 years. Your life is but a dash. You better hear me. Amen. And beloved, During that dash of his life, he was abandoned by his brothers. He became a slave. He was falsely accused of rape and was in prison. But now, help me somebody, we see him in his God-ordained glory. Amen. When our hearts become void of bitterness, love becomes a victory. Every time. Every time. Amen. Love always conquers hate. Love always conquers hate. Amen. Love took Joseph from a defeated status to that of prime minister of state controller of the household, and the second in command. Beloved, look at God. Uh, uh, let me say this in closing. Joseph never held the top seat. You better hear me. But God used him to save his entire region and save his entire family from certain disaster. Joseph became one of the most relevant, and the most relevant biblical leaders of his era. Not because he was in the top seat, but because he served well in the number two chair. Because he served well in the number two chair. Let us pray. Bless the eternal and everlasting Father. Father, our blessed Lord, the wonderful Savior Jesus of Christ. Lord God, we come with bowed down here as a humble and grateful and encouraged hearts, Lord God. Oh, Father, thank you for all our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt on tonight. Help us to understand, Lord God, that if we just stay in your obedience, stay in your will, stay in your way, Lord God, you will make a way out of no way. Oh, Lord God, if you told me to run through a brick wall, Lord God, I'm going to run through that wall because I know by the time I get to the wall, you'll put a hole in it. Oh, I believe you, Lord God. Help us to have that type of faith, to know that God doesn't want what's good for us. Lord God, you only want what's best for us. And for that, we say thank you, Lord God. Sometimes we get blinded by our condition. Help us, Lord God, to become more focused on our position. Please help us, Father. Strengthen us. Help us, Lord God, to, to rest through and abide in us that we may rest through and abide in thee. Help us become all that you ordain we must become. Help us to, to not grow bitter, Lord God, but always to grow better. Help us, Lord God, for you said only two things, amen, that you, uh, Lord God, that's yours. You said tithes and vengeance. So help us to give that vengeance to you, Lord God to move our pride out of the way, to trust you, to stop trying and to do more trusting. Help us, Lord God. Thank you for all that you've shown us on today. Help us, Lord God, to help us understand that we can flourish when we've done what you've told us to do. As long as we're in the will of God, there's no safer or better place to be. Thank you, blessed Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to continue to help us to stay focused and knowing, Lord God, to stand on the truth that you alone are God. That we stand on the fact that there's only one God, and that's you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Help us to continue, Lord God, to bow down and worship the only begotten Son of God, and to continue to study, to become thoroughly equipped for every good work, be error-free, life-sustaining, life-saving, incorruptible, inexhaustible, infallible, immutable, wonderful, wonderful, errant, free word of God. Father God, these, and all the other blessings we do ask, in the wonderful, matchless name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen.